Hello guys. So in this tutorial we're gonna talk about classic adventure game cameras. Uh, you might see a few of them in games like uh, Dino Crisis, Resident Evil, Siberia and maybe a few more. Um, I'm gonna show you the breakdown of main logic part so you can try to replicate it and uh, you understand the idea behind this logic. And in case you want to have this sample project, you may follow up the link uh, to my Patreon and uh, we have the subscription, you can uh, obtain it. So, as you can see from the screen, uh, I already have four cameras uh, applied to my scene. Uh, here on the right side, you may see that I have few options uh, exposed. So, uh, I have the separate actor, uh, which operates over the sign camera, and uh, each of them uh, can have their own field of view, uh, minimum and maximum aperture for tilt, shift and bokeh effect. Uh, they might be uh, locked on Y and Z axis, or in other words, uh, it's pitch and your rotation, rotation lag, so uh, they attach to the camera boom and uh, by uh, enhancing the lens of camera boom uh, distance and applying the rotation uh, lag, we'll also have uh, the smooth transition between uh, following the main character. My own approach uh, consists of few parts. As I said, I have uh, the camera actor, it's simple blueprint, as you can see here, with this kind of logic here and in the construction script. It also have some uh, changes here on the details panel for the camera boom. It's the spring arm component and the sign camera. I have few of them obviously uh, placed in the world and I also have the actor component, which is called camera manager, which contains this part of logic and one more uh, function. So, uh, default pole, uh, it's your player character, should uh, have this uh, camera manager attached. You may see that you only need to add it here and just play some cameras and the feature will work. Same goes for the third person character. Here and as you may see, we have from our component call for the pure function called camera related input. And that's it. Once you have this one, uh, you can also play uh, as if you have the gamepad or your keyboard. As for the main uh, part, when we start or stop following our character, uh, set view target with blend. We should call them with our camera manager here. I'm gonna explain it a little bit later. Next uh, essential tricky part here is in case you want your camera to work as if it's the security camera to follow your character, we need to have the proper angle between character and the camera. So, uh, for this one, we can use the function which is called find look at rotation. Also, this one is used on tick, and uh, I used uh, to use timers for this kind of logic and in my camera manager to search for the proper uh, cam. But uh, timers, and because uh, Android Engine is the FPS uh, based engine. Each tick uh, depends on the frame rate. So if we have lags or hitches during our gameplay, uh, there is no way to make this camera smooth. So, uh, and basically all the games which like Siberia or Resident Evil, they're not uh, like the classic one. They're not about uh, having uh, complex features. They're all about uh, like immersive and uh, atmosphere, so uh, smooth uh, smoothness in transition between camera 
changes is actually essential part. Now guys, why do I choose to use sign camera here and not uh, the simple one? So as you may see here on the start following, I also have this part. Uh, it's set member in the camera focus settings where I choose to track my character. Uh, the reason is actually quite obvious. Uh, this functionality comes out of the box and we can uh, override it once we need it. Also, on the end begin play, you may see that I also override the minimum and maximum aperture. So that means that uh, minimum aperture is the minimum that we can use to have the bokeh effect. And the maximum aperture here works actually for the current aperture. So let me show you. This camera right here, we're gonna change the minimum aperture to 4. Once we launch the game, you may see that our background is actually uh, without any blur. But if you take it to 0 0.2 and it's our minimum, so if you use less than 0 0.2 it actually won't work, so this one is our minimum. This one is our current one. Once I launch the game, you may see my background is perfectly blurred. And I have this tilt shift effect, which actually uh, is fully dynamic. So you may see that it shifts and our uh, near clip and far clip areas uh, are actually shifted towards our scene. Now I'm gonna show you my construction script. So you may see that here I can define field of view of my camera, its uh, local Z offset, and the same uh, for the pitch and your angles, so I can adjust my camera to have uh, the perfect preview, like this one, or like this one, or like this one. Future me. Um, this feature can be adjusted, and I found that with few uh, adjustments. I can make dolly zoom actually dynamic without uh, any uh, stoppage uh, between the phase and probably I'll do it next time and implement it to this feature also and uh, I have a warning so before you start uh, please adjust the camera angles like the camera in the world properly, so build the route, build the way how you will be making your own uh, one more time route uh, through the game, through the level, uh, so uh, in case you don't want to have an update or some cringe artifacts uh, appear, uh, you need to yeah, make the proper rotation, so for instance you start moving Forward and your next camera should have uh, an angle uh, actually towards to you, so uh, there won't be any hitch for the first time when the camera is activated. Uh, otherwise, you need to go to um, your player camera and every place where do you have um, follow actor, simply uh, adjust it to uh, play upon here, here, and here. And of course, from the start following, you may uh, delete the link to the follow act. Also set relative location and rotation. Uh, so it's the local variables, and that's uh, actually the operation for this one. And here I defined the boom lens, uh, actually the ability to have the camera boom and uh, camera boom lag speed. So, as for the sign camera, for this setup, I choose it to be a 16 by 9 DSLR, so it will return me the full sensor width of 36 millimeters. and in case you haven't seen my previous tutorials on the cameras, please go and watch. And uh, what do I have here also? 
constraint aspect ratio is set to be false so I don't see those uh, fancy movie uh, black lines so as for the camera manager here on details you may see that it's simple actor component on the event begin play I have tricky parts to withdraw all the errors so uh, once it starts I simply disable tick and search for all the cameras on my scene if I have any I enable tick and then comes this part uh, which is for checking the best camera available uh, to transition so I iterate with the break so once I found the best one I don't need to iterate all, uh, over the whole array uh, I choose uh, get horizontal distance too because I found it better uh, rather than to also check for the z-axis this value is adjustable and uh, it's kind of tricky the less value you have here the larger transition between cameras will be the higher value here the sooner the transition will start I also have this temporal variable because uh, this part is for activate and start following uh, event only once per uh, activated camera so I check whether it's not valid my uh, main active camera I use do once and set temporal camera as my uh, actual active camera and then start following event called within this logic once uh, cycle goes and this one is actually valid if it's not the same as my temporal one I simply uh, switch it back to the null uh, value so that leads to the following uh, result so if I use print here you may see that hello one time hello second time but in case I don't have this uh, validation logic if I simply go with like this you may see that this event is called every frame and I don't need to have uh, extra data or written each frame due to this uh, like logic is also ticking every time if you talk about controlling our character not with the point and click but with our keyboard uh, the default setup here simply ruins the gameplay so this one is based on the control rotation and once we change the camera uh, our input will be masked so right now i'm pressing w s and you may see that character simply uh, doesn't follow the direction correctly now when i press w it starts uh, running on the right s backwards a on the right and d on the left so that's is incorrect uh, this one solution uh, can help us so we simply need to get player camera manager and operate uh, with uh, its rotation value but it also leads to the following artifact let me show you so each time our camera changes this one will be overwritten so now I press W, S, A, and D, and as you may see, it works fine. But once I overlap, I'm gonna do it slowly. You may see I'm pressing W, now I'm moving backwards. And if I press W once again, my direction is correct. S, A, D, W, S. So, basic behavior for this kind of games is that if we press W, our character should go out from our camera. S, back to the camera. A and D, uh, accordingly to left and right. So, we need somehow to store uh, the previous data once our camera is changed. So, I have this formula uh, that I've implemented in the uh, actor component, which is called camera related input so it gets uh, the values from my inputs and then uh, transforms it to the vector to the direction 
So it works uh, next. Now if I press W, it should change its direction and start uh, running backwards. S A D. Now if I press A, it's gonna be left. It's gonna be right on the D. It's gonna be W out of our camera and S to our camera. So the logic is quite simple. If any of my inputs are zero, it means that uh, my input is actually uh, unchanged. So that's why I uh, get my new value uh, and overwrite it to the rotation. And once I press my key, my character will start moving with the uh, new uh, direction, new input. But if uh, this condition fails, if right or like if any of my input uh, isn't equal zero, it means that uh, I continue pressing any key and I should uh, like store my previous input. Once I stop and start uh, uh, pressing my inputs again, this will overwrite and this one will work. So that's how you can have this kind of smooth transition without any confusing uh, issues uh, during the camera changes. So guys, I hope you like my uh, kind of tutorial, this breakdown, and as always, if you like to support me, please uh, follow the link and uh, visit my Patreon page. Uh, in case you want to have or start having uh, my sample projects, uh, previous and uh, new, uh, please uh, subscribe to it. Of course, subscribe to my channel, leave your feedback, uh, press like button, bell and so on and so on. Uh, I really... Uh, I'm really appreciated to everything that I have right now and thank you one more time guys and see you soon.